Prasanna asks us, I want to extract data from WSS old version. What is it? Do you, do you don't need to modify WSS with old version? It, yeah, uh, there you were say WSS the old version. version. Synchronous, anyway, yeah. <laughs> to SharePoint 2016, which by the way, Prasanna, is an old version. Yeah. Uh, but the data stored in SQL as tables is in that my table in that my table, my list is an item is as item. I mean, maybe I'll read that over again. Um, <laughs> so the we'll data stored in SQL as tables yeah. in that table, my list is as item, how to retrieve the list from WSS. So I can speak to that. The so <laughs> let's first establish what WSS old version is, uh, because if you're going technically, you know, there was WSS Windows SharePoint Services version two, which was back in the 2003 days, WSS version three, which was 2007, and then it turned over to um, SharePoint. Uh, what was it? I want to say framework, but not framework. Um, foundation. Was it just yeah, some foundation. SharePoint foundation? Yeah. Foundation. Yeah. Thank you. I knew it was an F. It's always F. You were getting SharePoint. there. You were getting there. Um, <laughs> so in any case, the thing is, around SharePoint 2010, which is going to be when SharePoint Framework, excuse me, SharePoint Foundation, foundation. Yeah. yeah, actually came along. Uh, thank you for my translators here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft added something called unattached database recovery, but it does not go back prior to 2010. But that would allow you to attach a content database into a SharePoint farm and run export operations against it to get lists and content out. If you're going back to WSS v2 or v3, what you're you're literally going to end up going against the database um, and there's no wonderful answer there. So I wish I had uh, paid a little more attention to the WSS old version part of this. Eh, yeah, lesson I learned. It, the minute I saw WSS, I'm like, I'm not putting an X next to that. I'm not even having a conversation about this. <laughs> We're not even going there. The truth of the matter is, though, I mean, there are a few like really super clunky ways to do it. Probably like you could go directly to the table and PowerShell and export it out and put it into something like a CSV file and then pull it back in. You could, you know, copy and paste it. <laughs> Well, and there's some really clunky ways to do this. There's just like no nice ways. Yeah, well, in all likelihood, I mean, the biggest challenge I think is going to be finding a tool still out there because there are plenty of ways to your point, Sharon, people did this, um, but, but PowerShell wasn't one of them because PowerShell wasn't around then. Oh, right, uh, fair. PowerShell actually was usable in the 2007 days, but only if you were using the .NET framework, there was no... PowerShell commandlet set for SharePoint at that point. Yep. Um, so I know, you know, guys like Keith Ritchie uh, back when he was doing more extensive work in the old versions, um, he would put out different things and you probably have to look for them online. But if you can find somebody old enough still doing SharePoint and you want to buy him a beer, I'll bet you can probably get a good a you know, a decent approach to addressing this question. Unlike this group of young kids, like we're not going to know. So, <laughs> yeah. My my only thought on that, you know, because I used to attach to my database, access databases to SharePoint tables. That's another way to pull it out, too. If they, you know, when you've got connected or lookup lists that I don't know the complexity of her table or whatever it is, because you can't kind of read what's in there. But <laughs> and the question is a little bit garbled. But uh, yeah, SharePoint or uh, Access might be an option too because you can import the list of SharePoint. Or access, access is always a nice clunky workaround. It's kind of funny, like it's it kind of does the job sometimes, but it is definitely uh, sometimes it's more work than it's worth. I did it. I used it today to go in. I it won't let me set a unique value on a column. It's saying there's something in here. It's not unique. There's five thousand plus items in there. So I went in and I I said I need to find duplicates query and it showed me all the ones that were duped. Ta -da, I Very nice. It. Very nice. Yeah. Access forever. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Access for the win. Yay! Yeah. Oh. That's like Database the one girls. time I think I'll say that. Ever. <laughs> Access is a nightmare to me. Uh it's my friend. Yeah, mine too. 
find back in a, was find a, unmatched queries all day long, every day. I wish I could do those in SharePoint. Yeah. Back in the days when I was a disaster recovery architect and I was trying to discover all of the mission critical applications in the company I was working for, I cannot tell you the number of access databases running on people's PCs at their desks that were mission critical, not on IT's radar, not backed up. Right. And they're all, they were all access 2.0. And Sean, that's how I made my living. Don't knock it. <laughs> I took there's, access there's job into in other things. <laughs> yeah, there's also a, a, an ulcer and a heart attack in that, Sherry. I it's literally a, have an open project. I really swear to God, have an open project right now. I'm moving two access databases from somebody's desk into SharePoint as a solution for now. As and to, It'll go into Power Apps, and it will ultimately end up becoming a custom solution um, but it's kind of in its our little transition phase. Still working on them. That's great. Wow. The paste yeah. a pen query to update the data. Whoop. Thank you. John, I don't I don't believe that you read the uh, the the small print when you signed up to do these that we are an access friendly <laughs> group here. I know. <laughs> I'm not a hater. I Use the right tool. Television. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Which is never access. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I said it again, didn't I? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs>